Well, I've been debating with ontologistics, or ontologistics, however you say that, uh, in the comments of, of his uh, video, but they're too short, so I thought I'd make a video reply. Um, it's not going to look as cool as his. Sorry about that. Uh, let's start with a quick review. I put on a, a, review, a, uh, a video of a talk I did at the University of Cambridge um, about the fine-tuning of the universe for life. Now, after, after going through the science of it, uh, there were four uh, main points that I wanted to make. Uh, that there are, there are four possible explanations of this fact. Uh, one, that uh, some form of intelligent life will form in any old universe with any old laws. Now, I think that is a good explanation if it's true, but all we know about it is uh, everything we know points to the fact that it's, I think it's false. Um, two, uh, there are deeper laws of physics and uh, when we know those, we'll know why the laws of nature as we know them couldn't be any different. Uh, I think that's also a little bit unlikely. Uh, number three is the multiverse. Um, there are lots of universes out there with lots of different laws, and life could only form in universes that were right for life, so life only appeared there. Basically, the universe had lots of goes at making life. Um, and four is intentional selection. Uh, our, our universe is the way it is, uh, precisely right for life, because some mind thought ahead and set it up that way. Now, that doesn't have to be a god uh, of any sort. Uh, human beings possibly could do this in the, in the far future. Now, the video I'm arguing against by, um, I, I think it's probably ontologistics. Anyway, um, he's arguing against the fine-tuning as evidence for God, and he gives two replies. Uh, so I'll quote those. Uh, one is that the universe is ideal for life because life has emerged by adapting to the laws of nature. Uh, anything that didn't adapt dies out. 98% of the species on Earth have died out. If the laws of nature were different, then life would have emerged differently or not at all. Uh, whatever the laws of nature are, they will be ideal for those structures that ma maintain themselves therein. So if we imagine the Earth were closer to the sun, um, then life, which evolved in these hotter conditions, would say, well, isn't it just great that we're perfectly uh, at the perfect distance from the sun? So that's point number one. Point number two that he made was... Uh, the probability of the laws of nature uh, are precisely as they are uh, is no less probable than that the laws of nature are different. Although the laws of nature being exactly what they are could be said to be exceedingly improbable, whatever they are, uh, whatever they would be would be exceedingly improbable. They are as improbable as any other laws. Now the point of my reply here is I want to say that those two replies are inadequate. Uh, in fact, I believe that if, if you reject God as an option, uh, then it's, it's, it's down to the multiverse or it's down to those deeper laws, he says. Putting up two fingers for Valerio. Um, so here we go. Re regarding point one that Onto made, uh, uh, the universe is ideal for life because life has emerged by adapting to the laws of nature. I, I deal with this in my video. I don't think Darwinian evolution is the answer here. Um, life can't form, let alone adapt. Uh, in a universe that contains no galaxies, no stars, no planets, no atoms, no molecules, no nothing. Um, adaption is something that life does as the environment changes, but we're asking what does a universe need to do in order to have life in the first place? Um, now, he says, if the laws of nature were different, then life would have emerged differently or not at all. Now, I actually agree with that sentence. But what I'd say is in the vast majority of cases, it's not at all. In the vast majority of universes, there's, life doesn't emerge at all. Now, uh, as an example of the fine-tuning to apply your argument to, he, he takes uh, uh, the, the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Now, I'm slightly baffled by this, because you claim to have read the Barrow and Tipler book, uh, The Anthropic Cosmological Principle. Um, the claim, let, let's go over it again, uh, is that uh, the laws of nature, uh, the, far, the, the constants of nature, and the initial conditions of the universe are fine-tuned for the existence of life. Now, the distance from the Earth to the Sun is none of those. It's not in those categories. It's not what we're talking about when we're talking about fine-tuning. Um, yes, life could survive if the Earth were a bit closer or a bit further away, but... What if the strong force, the, the nuclear strong force, were 50% strong, were weaker? Well, if that happens, every single atom in your body falls apart. How does life adapt to that? It, it, it just, it 
just can't. So we're not talking about minor changes in the universe, taking the sun and, and, and the earth and just you know, changing that distance a bit. These are, these are major, major changes. So I think you're underestimating uh, the fine tuning of the universe. Now, in one of the comments, um, you, 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 you say that uh, whatever structures X, uh, if any, like life emerged, one could say hypothetically that a universe and its laws chosen at random um, are extremely unlikely to support X. Now, uh, the problem with this claim is that it's uh, false. Um, let, let X equal black holes. Um, and let's consider the fine-tuning on a parameter called Q. It's, it's the lumpiness of the universe. Uh, in our universe, Q is 1 in 100,000. So uh, 0 0.00001, that's four zeros. If Q is greater than 1 in 10,000, so just three zeros, 0 0.0001, if it's greater than that, then you make black holes in abundance. And, and any Q better than that, greater than that will do. It, now, if it's less than one part in a million, uh, you don't. Uh, you just make a thin hydrogen suit. So, of of the range of Q values, if you want uh, life and and planets and galaxies and all that, you've got a very small range. But you've got a very large range for black holes. So, it's just not true that a, any structure is unlikely. Black holes are easy to make. It's it's life and planets. That's the hard stuff. That's where you've really got to hit that target perfectly. Point two, I think, is, is actually slightly more interesting. I, I dealt that with a post on my blog. The link is on the side, over there or over there, um, depending on which way it actually points. Um, now, uh, you seem to have missed the point of my blog post, so I'll, I'll go over it again with a, with a different example. Suppose that we're playing poker, you and I. Um, suppose I'm dealing, um, and it, as the cards are turned over for the first hand, uh, you get a pair of eights and I get a royal flush. Now, I win. Obviously, royal flush beats everything. Suppose the next hand it happens again, I get another royal flush, and then I get three more. So I get five royal flushes in a row. Now, you might look at me a little bit suspiciously and say, uh, you're cheating. And I say, prove it. And you say, well, the probability of five royal flushes in a row is about one in a hundred billion, billion, billion. Now what if I replied, ah yes, but that's the same probability as any other set of five hands. Now I'm actually right. It is as improbable as any, any other set of five hands. I'm also clearly cheating and you're a complete idiot if you keep playing with me. So how do we resolve this tension? Well, the answer is that we've, um, we've asked the wrong question. If I make the statement that the, the two statements, the probability of five royal flushes in a row is 100, one in a hundred billion, billion, billion. If I say oh, that's the same probability as any other set of hands, those two statements are only true if I'm dealing fairly. If I'm actually properly shuffling the cards and doing the whole thing randomly. You see, we're asking the wrong question. We've asked the question, suppose I'm dealing fairly, what's the probability I get five consecutive royal flushes? And we get the answer, well, it's the same as any other set of five hands. But the real question is, not that one, the real question is this. Suppose that, against those overwhelming odds, I just dealt five consecutive royal flushes. What's the probability that I'm dealing fairly? See the difference? It's not, assume he's dealing fairly, what's the probability of five royal flushes? It's, I just got five royal flushes. What's the probability that I'm dealing fairly? Now, that difference will be clear to anyone who understands Bayes' theorem in uh, probability. You can do the calculations. I, they're on my blog if you want to see an example of this. Um, but the point is this. 